Bees are dangerous. Just ask Nicholas Cage. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Around 2 million people in the US are allergic to bees. But you know what is almost impossible to be allergic to? Almost impossible. <laughs> Cute bees! Oh, Suzume is an adorable little bee. There. I could end this video right here, right now, and it'll still be insanely accurate. This bee girl, not the bees, as voted by my Patreon. This is Suzume, the five foot tall, vivid honey mustard of TJPW. She, who is so bright and yellow and loads of fun. She, who stings harder than Muhammad Ali with her iteration of the RKO, aka Ring a Bell. Let's dive in for that sweet honey, aka. Lore. Who's ready for story time with Meerkat? Meerkat. Meerkat. The Ma got the Meerkat. Meerkat. That's so funny. But at one restaurant in Geelong, it's the Meerkat who's the star. Okay. Suzume was inspired to become a wrestler after seeing the white dragon, Rika Tatsume, and had her first exhibition match as Izumi against the future stardom player, Mirai. What makes Suzume so popular other than her pure, pure adorableness? Like seriously, she can do anything and be adorable. But what makes her so popular is just how fun she is. A very bright and fun-loving creature that buzzes around the ring like this and smiles like this. In the ring, she is a high-speed buzzy bee buzzing around opponents with such speed, utilizing bee flight patterns because bees utilize quantum physics in their flight path. So that makes Suzume a super, super smart physicist that even Oppenheimer will look at her like this, like, Why can't I? Be as cute as her, cause Killian in the ring, this bee girl be Killian it. Okay, I'll stop with the puns. Sorry, 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 I'll stop with the puns. Suzume is a smaller wrestler amongst everyone else, but logically uses her style to her advantage. You don't see her doing suplexes and Germans. Instead, she uses a super quick style. All her levels were placed into dexterity, including a really fast drop kick she can pull out of nowhere. Lots of misdirections and subversions. Quick attacks to stop others before they do. Creative flash pins that are super cool and action movie-like. Springboard face crushers to catch the opponent off guard, her signature and uniquely delivered crossbody, where she planks herself mid-air to collide with her opponent for maximum damage with her weight, and of course, her finishing move, ring a bell, a move that should literally ring a bell of what inspired it, because also, she hits it and you might as well ring the bell, but also, she hits it and you get your bell rung. It's a creative name, actually. Despite her size, too, her style logically dictates the entirety of the match, with the ring a bell being the goal for her endings. Thus, she has moves that are meant to exhaust the stamina of their opponent, lots of flash pans to work their opponent into a frenzy and potentially steal a win, but also a side manji to weaken the head with her legs, as well as the usual prelude to her finish, the face crusher that she can hit in a variety of ways, including a springboard, all to weaken the head enough to finally hit the ring a bell, sometimes spamming it in a variety of ways. I do think she can spam it a bit more, but that will weaken the finish, so it's fine. However, having a move that is so quick like an ace crusher, I do think she can attempt for it more than she does. That said, Suzume is a great underdog wrestler with, surprisingly, according to Cage Match, only 67 singles matches to her name since 2019. I wouldn't say Suzume is the best actor in the ring, she's serviceable in her delivery, but when she does win, she always has this look of being proud of herself for doing so, and I love that about a smaller wrestler. Plus, yes, she is incredibly adorable. Like, 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 like look at her dress as Mizuki, Oh, a bee bunny. <laughs> or dress like Palm Harajuku as Suzume Harajuku. Oh my god. Her fashion is so good. Her little bee outfit. Aww. I love that you can track her career by her in-ring gear. Always changing it up in some way. Her latest form is this sick cyberpunk luminous outfit here. Mm, dope. Her debut expedition match was against Mirai, but her first match at Suzume was teaming with Mirai against Shoko Nakajima and Riho. 
Oh, oh, mean we ho. Why are you being so mean? She wouldn't achieve her first singles win until she tapped out Senna Shiori with a sleeper, but was mainly teaming with her mentor. Suzume, the ever fast hyper bee, and the mighty powerful lariat machine with the cute smile, Mirai, managing to pin Shoko Nakajima with one. They achieved their first shot at the Princess Tag Team titles against Miyu Watanabe and Rika Tatsumi, the white dragon, who will become a rival and test for Suzume. After the legs and eventually the neck with the dragon sleeper, and Miyu being Miyu, doing the big swing she's infamous for, and showing her strength of a double slam on B Star. But despite the strength of her eye, the inexperience of Suzume against the experience of the White Dragon was just too much for the B. For this story, these two, Daydream, are the antagonists to our B hero. Her second shot at the Princess Tag Team titles was against Neo Bishki Gun, the May St. Michelle version. They previously lost to Neo B Gun when May St. Michelle tapped out Suzume at the Futari Max Heart Tournament, and May being the little stinker she is, this evil goblin. But Suzume, a smart bee, because bees are quantum physicists. But oh, May St. Michelle, such an evil goblin. Oh, look how evil she is. And goddamn it, he still fell in love with Saki-sama. How dare you fall in love? And oh my god, I'm in love again with Saki-sama. Oh, never mind the little goblin outside killing the bee. Oh, no, 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 no. It's all about the beauty of Saki-sama. And oh, she dumped Kiso. I felt that in my heart. Oh, yikes. But May St. Michelle is such a fantastic, perfect little actress. Look at her expression. That seems like she wants to bite this bee. And despite Suzume buzzing around and the lariats of Mirai, May St. Michelle's viciousness is brutal, locking in the May St. submission for the tap out victory. And this face here, this evil face, before Sakisama thanks her and she's back to being a delusional, happy, adorable goblin. Oh, she's so evil! But for the second time, Suzume failed to win the princess tag team titles as she cries in Mirai's arms. Oh. So sad. They would never get their catharsis either, as Mirai would have her last match in TJPW with Suzume and Haruna Neko, departing onto a road of Bushi into the realm of stardom, leaving behind her memories with a tiny bee. Suzume hasn't had much luck in singles as compared to the others, but she's had some pretty good performances. Like when she faced SKE48 idol Yuki Arai at Positive Chain, Yuki Arai, in only her seventh singles match with only one victory prior, now facing against Suzume, already three years into her career, in a match to show dominance for the new generation. And it was very well performed by both. But Yuki Arai has those expressions that I really like to see in wrestling. Not just the hint of sociopathic energy here, but also the way she tells the story with her face. The B would attempt to slow down the match in a subversion of her own style, but Yuki Arai is bigger and stronger, forcing the B to speed things up and take it to her. But Yuki Arai has the power in her boots, the determination and fire with her scorpion deathlock, forcing Suzume to show her resilience in escaping. And look at how Arai's face glazes over with each hit from Suzume, letting her body fail with each hit, almost losing consciousness with each sting. However, Suzume's winger bell would be countered into a full Nelson Slam, and Yuki Rai would hit one of my favorite finishers in TJPW today. Her axe kick called, finally. And she would defeat Suzume in only her seventh singles match in her career. A big win and a huge statement on just where the future rests with TJPW. As harsh as that is, Suzume has to get stronger. She does so by appearing in Gato Move, Emi Sakura! A wild bee appeared to wrestle Mei Suruga for her fourth anniversary event, facing someone she would team with as maybe surprise, the also adorable team, the double cute on purpose. But they meet as opponents, two people of the same size and cuteness, and Mei is such a good foil for just about anybody in wrestling, a great test to level up your skills, but oh Mei so cute. Cute, going wee, wee. But Suzume is a cute bee, damn it. She's adorable too. But who's more adorable? With a both cute on purpose. Oh no! It's 
too much cuteness. But May is a goblin and stalking her prey. Oh no, she's attacking her like a cat. She's attacking her like a And May is a mean goblin, so creative with her attacks, equipped with the apple mutilation and the biting. Hey, no, she's just tasting people rough. If it's cute, it's legal. This match is my favorite match of Susan May's, and you should watch it. It was a main event style for Susan May, and May was fantastic, using the ref like, oh no, what are you doing, May? Oh, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, Susan May back in the fight, and the flight of the Bumblebee. The stiff fighting between the two, the epic clash, the counters and counters, oh, and even more counters, the physics of the bee, the counters of the apple girl, locking in the numero uno, the numero uno, but the resilience of the bee reaches the ropes, but the viciousness of this amazing apple girl is off the charts, her logic in the ring is so on point, like this double stomp here, and the helicopter spin to pin Suzume. In my favorite match of hers, to truly showcase just what the vivid honey mustard can do. Boss battles in wrestling is something I love. She had her test against Mei Suruga, but in TJPW, she would have her biggest test to date on my birthday in 2022 at Wrestle Princess 3 against Ryu Mizunami, aka Anaki. Anaki, the soup. Super, super colorful and highly energetic boss, bringing the thumping music and the rock star vibes. Pure joy and fun is Anaki, and the people love her. Suzume would have a tremendous performance against this boss, a total DPS check. Does Suzume have enough levels to compete against the Abyss Watchers in Dark Souls 3, or even an understanding of the game like Genichiro and Sekiro? Anaki is the perfect opponent to test someone, and Suzume brought it in both her wrestling and in-ring expressions. Doing things she doesn't normally do, like flying outside, the BB buzzing outside, and Aki-like. <laughs> Throwing caution to the goddamn wind! Hitting her unique crossbody, a perfectly executed drop kick, catching her in a manji, weakening the neck for the potential ring a bell. Anaki is too strong and powerful still, looking to end the match, but Suzume, brilliant here. Look at her face as she's fighting to survive. This is probably her best acting performance in her career, working hard to counter the power of Anaki, executing new moves to bring it, and very, very nearly pinning Anaki in a corner, getting the whole crowd to chant, Suzume, Suzume, over Anaki, bringing out the second phase beast mode in this boss, yet Suzume, still crawling, still fighting, this humble bee eating a lariat, but one final death defying scream, before the final lariat ends her. Another of the best matches in Suzume's career, and you can see the future rising in Suzume right here. Phenomenal performance. Between this and her Gato move appearance, she would appear again in another great match five days later. It's Choco Pro Wrestling, and things are normal. But oh, a wild Suzume! Oh, hi, Suzume! She's in plain clothes and is great friends with Mei Suruga because pro wrestling is an anime, folks, and they're adorable. Oh, it's maybe surprise! And Suzume even competed against Chie Koshikawa and Jenkin. She's got Mei's full support, and she's all like. <laughs> <laughs> Now Chie is determined and defeats Suzume with scissors. Chie with the spiteful win. But hey, Suzume, stop it! The purity and wholesomeness of Choco Pro got the move fits the sensibilities of Suzume so much that I truly, truly wish she appeared far more. But she would appear one more time for Gato Moo's Phoenix Rising 10th Anniversary Show, teaming with Aris Endo as Daisy Monkey against Chie Koshikawa and Sayaka, aka Orange Panacotta, aka Ori Pon. And if you're someone who's who's like clearly out of their mind, like clearly, but if you don't like the aesthetics of Choco Pro Wrestling and prefer a wrestling ring in your wrestling, like people in Hell want Ice Water too, buddy, but you should watch this match because all of Emi Sakura's pupils are great professional wrestlers. Wrestlers. This match was filled with adorableness, but also passion in its purest, rawest form. 
you got Sayaka, smiling violence, armed with her vicious violent forearms. She's the world's cutest serial killer, and it's all business out there. But you got one of my favorites in wrestling today, the one who will always put a smile on my face, Chie Koshikawa, showing her in-ring skills, but also those expressions of hers. Her acting is S-tier. I truly believe Chie Koshikawa has a unique face for any scenario. Going <laughs> and then like a cat. Whack! Oh, psycho cheese! Oh, and Oripan showing what got the move brings to the table. It was an excellent match, and one of my favorite Daisy Monkey encounters as well. Daisy Monkey brought their fluid and smooth tag team offense to the table, and despite Chie's passion and too much energy, Suzume brings her down with a face crusher prelude into the perfectly delivered ring a bell to end Oripan's night. Daisy Monkey won the match in what is Suzume's best iteration, wrestling with her colored haired, passionate best friend. Aris Endo used to be a part of the support team for Kaije Muto's now defunct promotion, Russell One, in a group simply titled Cheer One, where they did. Exactly that. Her superior was wrestler Raika Saiki, who also wrestled for Wrestle 1 and is where Iris first saw women's wrestling. After Wrestle 1 folded, Iris watched more Raika Saiki and was inspired to continue supporting wrestling. By becoming a wrestler herself, Raika was the muscle idol. Look at her lift up Himeka in a torture rack. Oh, girl. She was a former Princess of Princess champion facing Miyu Yamashita and having that wrath of her knee. She lost the title to the ace, but her influence caused a new wrestler to appear with Alice Endo, who would eventually be Raika's final opponent in her retirement match in 2022. Wrestling for just three minutes, Raika showed off her agility, her strength, didn't take it easy on Endo, but she would reverse the camel clutch Raika gifted to Endo and had to hold on until time ran out, refusing to submit to end her career in pro wrestling. She gave an emotional send off to everyone, especially to Endo. Raika Saiki finished her wrestling career while inspiring another. When Ali signed with TJPW in 2021, she soon met her first opponent, Suzume. In her debut match, she managed to lock in Raika's camel clutch on tight, almost getting Suzume in the process before eating a ring of bell. They were teamed for the first time against the Magical Sugar Rabbits in a losing effort, but didn't start becoming a solid team until they earned the number one contender spot, defeating Yuki Arai and Moko Miyamoto. From then on, they named themselves Daisy Monkey, earning a shot for the Princess Tag Team titles against the staple team of the Magical Sugar Rabbits. They would start working well as a tag team, but Yuka Sakazaki is a little meanie. Such a mean magical girl. Oh my god, she's so mean. My favorite part was when Yuka was going to straight murder Suzume, so Adi saved her from death at the last second. That's a best friend right there. Daisy Monkey's tag team offense is super flashy, and Suzume manages to catch Yuka Sakazaki with the ring of bell, but her inexperience leads her to tag Ice instead of covering, and the brief moment of respite allowed Sakazaki to kick out. Ice would have Mizuki in the clutch, locked in tight, but Mizuki's too skilled, and Yuka too stubborn, hitting the splash, and Mizuki straight drills her with her viral double stomp into the chest of Ice, defeating Daisy Monkey in Rotating their titles. They lay in tears together as for the third time, Suzume has failed to capture the princess tag team titles, this time with her best friend, and Ari sad, for she is the one who was pinned. Next year's Max Hart Tournament was tragic for them as they lost to Juria Nagano and Mocha in a surprising upset, and once again, Aris Endo lost the match. Despite winning the majority of their next encounters, it seemed like destiny that they would fail in their tag team ventures 
after free Wi-Fi had to vacate the titles, Daisy Monkey's scheduled tag team title shot turned into a triple threat for the vacant princess tag team titles against Yuki Niki's Yuki Aino and Anaki versus Daydream's Yuka Tatsumi and her punk rock vest and Miyu Watanabe. It was a tornado tag team match, thus, it was pure action and chaos, Anaki being a strong powerhouse boss, Daisy Monkey being the quick high speed tag team, and Daydream using their combination of Miyu Watanabe's insane power of the swing, eat your heart out Claudio, and Rika Tatsumi's plain oh meanness. The energy levels in this match was off the charts. Despite the efforts of Daisy Monkey, it was once again Ariso Endo who would fall. Yukiniki won the tag team titles, and once again, Ariso is left in tears with her best friend. However, the despair of constantly losing big matches would drive them further into the 2024 Futari Max Heart Tournament. They would defeat Raku and Palmu, Suzume clearly emotional about making it further, the drive and passion fueling them. They would face the team they lost to the prior year, Moko Miyamoto and Jiria Nagano, with Arius overcoming doubt and tapping out Nagano with the camel clutch. As relief washes over Endo's face, they had reached the finals of the tournament and facing opponents they have lost to before, with a certain white dragon that held a dark cloud over a smiling bee. Joseph Campbell and his hero's journey is a staple amongst storytelling, a common template for mythology, one that can be applied to any story and even more importantly, to the self. As Campbell himself states, a hero ventures forth from the world of common day into a region of supernatural wonder. Fabulous forces are encountered and indecisive victory is won. The hero comes back from this mysterious adventure with the power to bestow booms on his fellow man. The hero will come to face a dragon. Although metaphoric, our hero of this story is a bee who will enter a quest to defeat an actual dragon. Suzume's whole inspiration into becoming a pro wrestler for TJPW was the right dragon herself. Rika Tatsumi had been a constant for TJPW, she had won every single title in TJPW, and Suzume had faced her numerous times, but I will be speaking on four singles matches. The first in 2019 was a sparkly new Suzume, facing against a boss battle of Rika, targeting the legs of Suzume, and losing to a dragon sleeper. They faced again in 2022. This time, Suzume had a lot more fighting spirit against the dragon, but the leg strat of Tatsumi is too OP, but it took a fully applied dragon sleep at this time to take out the vivid honey mustard. Their third match was the quarterfinals of the Princess Cup 2022. Suzume was more focused this time around and a lot more aggressive with a massive sense of urgency in a tournament setting. Rika would once again go after the consistent strat of the leg. Suzume's fighting spirit on display, countering the twist of fate and hitting the ring a bell. But the damage to the knee proved super effective, causing the delay in the pin and Rika kicked out. With all of her tricks used, Rika's iron ass attacks are consistent moves that few people ever have an answer for, and it's basically her Ricotta Dropkick, a move she can hit any time to save her match. The Dragon Sleeper is once again applied, but this time, Suzume counters and manages to hit a flash pin to shockingly beat Rika Tatsumi for the first time in her career. Suzume would fail to win the tournament, but this was a Big moment for her, but despite being Rika, she won by a lucky pin and not through her own fighting power. She would have a chance to prove that she can beat Rika Tatsumi properly in a title match for the International Princess Championship held by the White Dragon. But Rika choking Suzume like Bart Simpson like why you little going after the leg again and brawling outside tons of antics but Suzume has learned from the past she's fighting harder than before managing to fly like a bee show her pain threshold by escaping the figure four she escapes the dragon sleeper to hit the ring a bell and even a second rope ring a bell but Suzume took far too much damage and can't cover until too much time had passed allowing Rika to kick out. 
one too many Ring of Bell attempts, but Suzume manages to latch on her submission to the already damaged neck, Rika exerting more energy to escape than she's been used to by Suzume, but eventually lands that consistent hip attack, a twist of fate, and then up top for a flying hip attack to knock out Suzume and secure the title defense. Suzume tried her absolute hardest to defeat the dragon, but in her greatest defeat thus far, a hero must die in order to be reborn anew and seek catharsis. Suzume and Arius would reach the finals of the Max Heart Tournament through teamwork and passion, each supporting one another to victory, and they would face Daydream, Miyu Watanabe, and Suzume's personal dragon, the White Dragon Rika Tatsume. And this is where Suzume's personal quest meets its catharsis. So what you're saying is if there are not dragons out there, and there may not the, be any. The real the dragon is in you. And what is that real dragon? That's your ego holding you in. What's my ego? What I want, what I believe, what I can do, what I think I love, and all that. What I regard as the aim of my life and so forth, it might be too small. It might be that which pins you down. And if it's simply that of doing what the environment tells you to do, it certainly is pinning you down. And so the environment is your dragon as it reflects within yourself. Slay that dragon in me. Follow your bliss. I mean, find where it is and don't be afraid to, to follow it. If the work that you're doing is the work that you chose to do because you are enjoying it, that's it. But if you think, oh, gee, I couldn't do that, you know, that's your dragon that's locking you in. Unlike the classical heroes, we're not going on our journey to save the world, but to save ourselves. And in doing that, you save the world. I mean, you do. The influence of a vital person vitalizes. There's no doubt about it. The world is a wasteland. But you say I have to take that journey and go down there and slay those dragons. Do I have to go alone? If you have someone who can help you, that's fine, too. But uh, ultimately, the last trick has to be done by you. Suzume finally hit the ring about on Mika Tatsumi and pinned her as clean as a whistle and Daisy Monkey has won the Max Heart Tournament. Suzume didn't do it alone either. She had her best friend Aris Endo with her. They earned this moment after years of teaming and once again Daisy Monkey will fight for the Princess Tag Team titles this time at the Grand Princess 2024 against Yukiki's Yuki Aino and Anaki. But just because Suzume was able able to pin her dragon, the story is far from over. She does have to definitively beat Rika Tatsumi in a singles match, but more importantly, she has another dragon to defeat. Her own struggles to win the Princess Tag Team titles. This would be her fifth opportunity for them, and third with Daisy Monkey. At the Grand Princess, they have an opportunity to defeat their own doubt and beat a tough team to achieve their catharsis. What remains unanswered 
depending on when you're watching this video, is will they finally win and become the Princess Tag Team Champions of TJPW. Suzume is only 25 years old, still a bright future ahead of her. This tiny, vivid, honey mustard bee girl, always smiling and always adorable in everything she does, is so much fun, brings so much energy and delight to TJPW, and is a serious professional wrestler in there. You would have noticed very few absurd comedic moments in this video, because TJPW is more than absurd comedy. While Suzume is indeed having fun, her arc is that of over Coming larger opponents and winning. She is out there to be like Rika Tatsume, a champion. Having fun with her best friend in Daisy Monkey, this humble bee is quite simply buzzing with life. And having her in the Tokyo Joshi Pro roster makes everything so much better. She is a speedy little bee, someone who will use her size to logically dictate the flow of her matches and her moves, who builds up her offense to swiftly deliver the ring a bell. She has a unique crossbody that is her standard and sets her apart, and her in-ring expressions go from pretty good to occasional wow factor. With five years of experience, Suzume is a very reliable in-ring wrestler and one who can do a variety of roles, especially in the tag team front. She has her stories left to fill, but we will see if she wins with Aris Endo as Grand Princess to finally be a champion. But all in all, despite the length of this video and all the chapters and arcs we went through, despite all the opponents, the highlight of victory and the agony of defeat, only one sentence truly sums up Suzume. Suzume is quite simply adorable. I wake from this dream, but I can't tell you the things that I've seen. I'd leave it behind if I could just change her mind. I can't believe the things that you are telling. Thank you to all my Patreon sponsors. Thank you for voting for this video. It's always fun to do TGPW Patreon sponsors type videos because they're longer, more lore driven, and I'm surprised I got 32 minutes out of Susan May. GF, the up channel, you can always that. He's your name days. Asia Trace, Maddox, just a sign. Matthew Phillips, just gonna know. Jeffu, Taryn, Dan, work, have Mullen, MK, we can't shake it. Buddy, Marty, 520, Juggernaut, Graphic, Shut Up, Ingo, Dot, Wave, Aaron, Securities, 4522, I want victims. JLA, Julia, Sunglasses, Chihuahua. Paul Diamond, Pickle Slammer, Scott Racer, Steven Stevens, Carver Tari D, Smoon, Little Choop Choop, Tony Davis, Jesse the Outlaw, and God's Morning Star. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. I am buzzing right now.